So Aiden Hutchinson is my number one edge rusher, right? And let me just kind of open up with this. I think everybody got to answer a few questions about themselves, you know, about who you are as a couch scout, as a draft fan, whatever. Are you floor guy or are you ceiling guy? What's more important to you? And and that's going to be a theme that just reoccurs throughout me breaking down how I like these players, how I like offensive linemen, running back, receiver, whatever. Floor guy or ceiling guy? Floor means what are you right now? Ceiling is what can you be? Now, my preference is high floor. Like I can see what you can do right now. And then you have some more room where you could get better high ceiling. Now, are there any players in this draft that are both high floor and high ceiling guys? No. Wow. I got a question for the professor here. Does the floor ceiling, does it differentiate depending on the team? Like, like if I'm a team that needs a guy right now, or a team that could kind of, you know, hey, I got an edge for a year or two, and I could wait for a couple of years. Does, does, so, does so in in terms of drafting, that could be the case, right? So the Cowboys, listen, let me tell you something. Y'all want as many high floor players as you can get because you need people to play right now. Mm-hmm. You know, Cowboy fans want, you know, like – Cowboy fans have 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 gotten so spoiled, I would say, you know, with how Dak and Zeke just kind of shows up. You know, we'll have an offensive lineman that we draft first and, and they'll just show up and Parsons and, you know, CD, just these guys that just show up playing day one. That ain't really always the case. That don't really happen like that. Players normally have to get acclimated to the lead, to the speed of it, and then they come out and play. Cowboys have been fortunate enough to where, okay, CD Lamb, for example, right? High floor. He can play for you right now, but the CD lamb that you have right now, the, the, the lamb that we have in year three is much better than the lamb that we saw his rookie year. You understand what I'm saying? So that's what I mean. Floor and ceiling guy. So if you're dealing with players, that's either floor or ceiling guy. And some guys, you know, can get better. Some guys, whatever, whatever, you know, that is very team dependent so you know if you the jaguars you bad right now maybe you can afford to wait on a Kayvon Thibodeau okay well we're not contending for the next three years so let's right. let those three years build up Thibodeau stock and then we'll see where we at now if you the cowboys you want somebody that can play right now which is why okay let's just go ahead and get in. Let me, let's just go ahead and run this in so my number one guy is um since I'm high floor guy Aiden Hutchinson is my number one guy I know what he can do right now is he going to get much, much better than he is right now? Probably not. He'll probably learn some technique. You know, the league will shape his body a little to what they want him to be. They may do some different things with him than Michigan did. But as far as the player that he is right now, that's the player that he's going to be. He's my number one guy. If there's anybody that – that because, look, when this shit dropped on Twitter, it was a whole bunch of Twitter things that – You know how Twitter is, fam. A whole heap of them. So I would love to see in any of these chat boxes, and this ain't me getting aggressive. This ain't me fussing it. I'm not bullying so nobody. So I'm, I'm like actually they, shocked they they came at you for Aiden and not George Karloftis. What I think the what I think the deal is with Karloftis, I think people just haven't seen seen film on him. Okay. You know what I mean? Like like when you see how people talk about Karloftis, it's from a standpoint like you can tell. Oh, my favorite draft guy hasn't been talking about Karloftis a lot. So I don't like Carl. My favorite draft guy has been talking about Hutchinson, Thibodeau, Jermaine, you know what I'm saying? Walker. Jabo so, before he got hurt. You know what I'm saying? Like those who my favorite. And Carl Loftus isn't a guy that we talk about a bunch. But anybody that watched film on George Carl Loftus, you shitting me? <laughs> you shouldn't. That dude could play. You know what I mean? So Hutchinson and Carl Loftus are my one and two guys because they're the higher floor guys. I know what they are right now. Yeah. They don't have the highest ceiling. But they're ready to play right now. Chad, if you disagree, please let me know. And my phone lines are open. So, Kayvon Thibodeau being my number three guy. Let me go ahead and full screen that for me. So, Kayvon Thibodeau being my number three guy. He's super, super raw, right? His floor is also a little low right now. But his ceiling can make him better than anybody in in this class right now. But that's if he reaches his ceiling gambling shooting dice in the bathroom you know what i mean possible Kayvon could be that guy now Kayvon's floor is a lot more opinion based right because my idea of Kayvon's floor 
I just kind of see him beating people, you know, with just pure athleticism. I kind of see him just run around bad offensive linemen, and that's cool. I see him show some explosion. That's fine. But when we're drafting, half of drafting is projecting. So if I see Kayvon Thibodeau just run past one of the Washington kids or whatever, right? He just run past him. That's different than Aiden Hutchinson punching a kid, <laughs> swiping a kid, getting caught and having a backup plan and then finishing a key. You, you yeah. There's you you winning differently means a lot here. Go ahead, Will. No, you're right. He's got a process to, to himself in, in regards to Aiden Hutchinson. It's not just out athlete you at, in college where if you are the top athlete, hey, I'm good to go nine times out of ten. Mm-hmm. 100%. Aiden rushes with a plan, you can tell. Karloftis rushes with a plan, you can tell. Kayvon Thibodeau runs down the middle of people. And that's kind of fine because he's been winning running down the middle of people. But if you run down them, like if he gets drafted by the Lions, you got to go against Bakhtiari week one. Good luck running down the middle of that dude. You know what I mean? You're going to have to develop something. But I think his raw floor makes him better than what we get from David Ojabo. And I was kind of back and forth on this one, but injury's not moving me on this. This is just purely whatever it is, right? The reason I got Thibodeau over Ojabo, even though I think Ojabo has the higher floor right now, Thibodeau's ceiling is so much higher than Ojabo's. Is why I put Thibodeau over Ojabo. I don't know how the fuck Trevon Walker get this out. Now, when I do watch Trevon Walker, I, I, I do see he's another ceiling guy. A lot of those in there. To be fair, three, four, five, and six are all ceiling guys. But they're in the top six for me because their ceiling is so high that they do that they actually have the opportunity to fix this and become who they are. But man, some of the floors, bro, like some of the floors are just so weird to me. Like when you watch film on Trevon Walker, you watch him and he's he's too look, he's 270 pounds and he runs a four or five. But he's big enough to play three tech sometimes. Like, you know what I mean? Like he's a special type of athlete. If you're the kind of GM, and this is kind of what Will Steele was saying, right? If you are having problems in your defensive room and you know, maybe you got time, maybe you don't, you know, whatever, whatever. Then maybe you don't need to draft some of these high ceiling, low floor guys. If I got a Dan Quinn, that may totally change how I how I rank this board. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. If, if somebody tapped me on the show and said, okay, Vosh, but make you bored with the idea that Dan Quinn gets these dudes day one. Oh, well, shit, I might go, you know what I'm saying? Kayvon, Aiden, Trevon, Carl Loftus, or Jop, Jermaine don't move, but like the rest of them kind of switches around a little bit with the idea that, oh, okay, well, cool, right, okay, cool. So when I make this ranking, it's more of a neutral 32 team right. type joint, you know what I mean? But Trevon Walker and Jermaine Johnson are both similar type players to me in the fact that they they got physical tool belts, but they don't have I know how to play defensive end tool belts. You understand? Like they got a long way to go in terms of how to win. And when you watch Jermaine Johnson highlight tapes, man, that's why I, I always tell people we, we can't just judge off highlight tapes. Absolutely not. When you watch Jermaine Johnson highlight tapes, he's running down the middle of people. And he's more rushing people and he'll push somebody around and he'll run down the middle of this guy and then he'll disappear. He'll disappear for a quarter and a half versus Notre Dame versus whoever, you know what I'm saying? Pick a school. Pick a school. Um, Carolina. Like, North Carolina State. I seen Jermaine Johnson versus Akeem Okwonu, and I didn't hear very much from Jermaine Johnson until he played on the other side of him. You know what I'm saying? So I just think that we just have to be honest with the film. And if you like Jermaine Johnson because he's super athlete, he tore up the senior bowl, tore up the pro bowl, and he has a high ceiling, you feel like you can work on him, I have no problem with you feeling like Jermaine Johnson should be your guy. But if you ain't got a plan and you just think he's just going to come in and smoke yep. shot at everybody, then, then you, you'll you probably be mistaken a little bit. You know what I mean? You'll probably be mistaken. Yeah, I was thinking about that, bro. Uh, mm-hmm. How if you get some of these high ceiling guys, they have to have the right coaching. Uh, you can't come in there. You know, Let's just say they take Thibodeau number one, right, and say, hey, man, you are, you are DE1. You are the anchor of our defense from here on out. Do yeah. your thing. Nah, you got to coach him up a little bit. Some of these other guys, Jermaine, too. 
And I feel like if you give Dan Quinn one of those high floor guys, hey, I feel real good about that. Sure. And, you know, honestly, sometimes these players need other things around them in order to make them who they are. Like Parsons is super talented, right? But if you pair him with Demarcus Lawrence you, and you give the green dot to J. Ron Curson, you have a teacher in Dan Quinn. That's just only going to bring extra points out of Michael Parsons, right? Excellent now, point. if Michael Parsons would have played for the goddamn, I don't know, if he would have played for Jacksonville or something, would, it, would he be the same guy? I mean, we don't know. He, he probably would have still been talented or whatever, but all those stimuli I ain't say stimulus is, but all those stimuli came together to help Michael Parsons become uh, the guy that he is.